I think the dominant trend in the European Union is an understanding that there is no positive alternative to a productive cooperation between China and the EU, given the size of the Chinese market with its largest purchasing power in the world. So I think that the pragmatic faction sees the benefit of steady and expanding trade between the two as the most important factor. Many of the member countries also see their own economic interest best served in closer economic relations with China. For example, it is very positive that the new Italian government of Giorgia Meloni upheld the Memorandum of Understanding that had been worked out by Professor Michele Giracci, former Undersecretary of the Ministry for Economic Development of Italy, as the first country of the G7 with China. Also, other countries of Southern Europe and several Balkan countries appreciate economic relations with China greatly. But the pressure on Europe to reduce economic dependency, as they call it, from China, coming mainly from the United States and Great Britain for geopolitical reasons, is considerable, given the fact that the containment of the rise of China is the main objective of these two Anglo-Saxon countries one must expect a growing crusade against China coming from these quarters in the coming period. Unfortunately, they have their co-thinkers inside various countries, like the German Green Party, who are notoriously anti-Chinese. For example, German Economic Minister Habeck, a Green, said no more naivety in trade dealings with Beijing. But his critics, and their number is growing, think that he is naive about what an economy is. The German industry and the industries of other European countries on the other side see the relation with China as the indispensable anchor. As the economic crisis will worsen, hopefully their voices will become more important than those of the green ideologues. The EU countries should compare the two initiatives. The Belt and Road Initiative is clearly the largest infrastructure project in history ever with major economic corridors, fast train connections, industrial parks, etc. While the Global Gateway is characterized even by the leading German business daily Handelsblatt as false labeling, empty words. On December 21st, they wrote under the headline, Global Gateway, Europe's billion bluff in systemic competition with China, that this initiative makes the geopolitical ambitions of the EU subject to ridicule. That every project which the Global Gateway now pretends to promote had been planned long time ago anyway. Important spokesmen from the developing countries have called it a media show. And even the civil servants of the Brussels bureaucracy are at odds with the directionality of the project. Now, according again to the Handelsblatt, the German government even has sent a list with secret projects to the EU to put some life into the global gateway. Rather than playing the geopolitical game, and that badly, the intelligence thing would be for the European nations to cooperate with the BRI, as China has offered repeatedly. The problems of hunger, pandemic, and underdevelopment in so many countries of the Global South are so massive that such a cooperation is urgently needed. Independent of the scientific discourse about the causes of climate change, it is the task of the industrialized countries to work together with China to help the developing countries most affected by the effects attributed to climate change to cope with the consequences. This is best done through development of infrastructure, industry, a health system and so forth. Rather than trying to push back the influence of China, and Russia for that matter, in Africa, the EU should work with China on addressing the basic needs of this continent, and that without conditionalities. The reputation of Europe in Africa is much worse than what most bureaucrats and politicians imagine. It is long an open secret that the attitude of many establishment figures in Europe is still that of a colonial mindset and the African nations are sick and tired of it. A recent example of such a mindset was given by Joseph Borrell, the High Representative of the EU for Foreign and Security Policy, who said that only the EU is a garden 
and all the rest is a jungle. Africa will have 2.5 billion people by the year 2050. And that means that more than a billion new productive jobs have to be created in the next 27 years, which means a lot of investments in industry and agriculture and a lot of new schools and universities, as well as science cities, have to be built. Europe should really rethink their approach and remind themselves of the better traditions it had in respect to the development of the developing countries such as the ideas of Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, who thought that it was the task of Europe to develop the South and the East for the benefit of the peoples. Or Enrico Mattei from Italy, who thought that Italy should be a bridge for the development of the Arab and African countries. While it is legitimate that there should be a reciprocity in market access and fair competition, a lot of the complaints from the European side are the result of the difference in the systems. China is more concerned about the basic parameters of the physical economy and has moved to restrict investments in speculative projects, while Europe follows the neoliberal model. However, on December 15th and 16th, the Central Economic Work Conference took place in Beijing under the leadership of President Xi Jinping. Apart from a general assessment of the economic performance of the present year and an outlook for the coming year of 2023, there was also a major part of the discussion about the improvement in foreign economic relations. It was agreed to increase the efforts to attract foreign investments, support opening up, and increase the level and the quality of cooperation in the areas of trade and investment. Also, market access and the opening of a modern service sector will be improved. Equal treatment of enterprises with foreign capital will be guaranteed. Intellectual property rights and the legitimate interest of foreign investors will be improved. The basic drift will be to make foreign investments and participation in trade and investment negotiations as easy as possible. One can be certain that the coming year 2023 will confront the whole world with what could become an unprecedented crisis. The hyperinflationary tendencies of the transatlantic neoliberal financial system will accelerate and have a devastating impact, especially on the countries of the Global South. The confrontation between NATO and Russia over Ukraine could go in the direction of a very dangerous escalation with unforeseeable consequences unless peace negotiations can be put on the agenda immediately. And the conflict would not be limited to that if the agenda of the last Madrid NATO conference for a global NATO is pursued fully. So in this very difficult strategic environment, it will be very important that the relations between China and the EU be an anchor of peace and stability, because nobody would be a winner in a wider war. The combination of the offers by China for the European nations to cooperate with the Belt and Road Initiative, the Global Development Initiative and the Global Security Initiative are extremely important and should be given serious consideration by Europe.